The last time I was browsing Steam, out of curiosity I looked at the games listed as adventure games and made some weird discoveries. From race games, immersive sims, MMORPGs to shooters and fighting games, the list seemed odd, as if the term adventure could be branded on every single game, regardless of its content. Is Disney Dreamlight Valley truly an adventure game? And what adventures would I find in Need for Speed Heat or in Microsoft Flight Simulator? These days, every game can belong to the adventure genre, as long as one controls an avatar that moves through a game's world. But should that really be the case? And what is an adventure, really? In this video essay, I will explain the ways in which games can make us feel adventurous and what we need to let go of as players in order to truly experience an adventure. It's been three times now that I've started a new game of Outward. Three times because I keep choosing the hardcore difficulty, which involves a slight chance, upon dying, to permanently lose my character and all the progress associated with it. The last time I started Outward, I played for about 10 hours before dying in battle against an enemy and losing everything in the process. To be honest, losing 10 hours of my time felt rough especially since this is not my first rodeo here. But after that third setback, I realized something new. That I was probably never going to finish Outward. That some of its locations and enemies will always remain foreign to me. And I was fine with it. What I like about this is that my impeding fourth playthrough of the game will still retain some mystery. It will still hold the promise of new things to see and experience Things I have never been able to witness before due to my earlier deaths. And this, to me, means that Outward becomes an adventure game the moment something is at risk for the player. When traversing the world, a lot more appears to be at stake when I have a chance to lose progress. All my actions in-game and all the elements I interact with acquire another layer of importance now that I may meet my end during the next enemy encounter or upon exploring an undiscovered cave. In other words, playing outward on hardcore feels like inviting the uncertain. Compared to a normal mode in which I know that, given time and dedication, I will be able to explore and see everything there is to see, the looming threats of permanent death result in apprehending what may happen to me, leaving me to ponder how far I will make it this time, and what I will be able to see of the game. For Vladimir Jankelevich, death is crucial in making human lives adventurous. The writer considers that an adventure where we have assured safety is not an adventure. For him, death is the one thing that will happen with certainty in a human life, which means that everything else may feel adventurous because it is undecided. The Long Dark, for example, is a survival game in which you're bound to die at some point, from hunger, from cold, or from being attacked by wildlife. Here, you cannot manually save. The game automatically saves for you, and death is permanent, and you will die. But the question is when, and how. Such uncertainty is what makes the game so enticing, because it invites the player to strategize in order to increase their chances of surviving just so they can see how far they'll go, and how much they can experience from the game. Exploration feels more meaningful and rewarding in these instances, as the player keeps encountering threatening and unexpected situations. A good exploration game is not necessarily one that holds your hand, guides you through it, and tells you that everything will be okay. Rather, it transforms new locations into menacing ones, it makes every confrontation into a life and death situation, so that going out there in the world coincides with encountering something foreign over which players have no control. As a result, to be adventurous in games implies accepting the unknown in our journey and letting go of some amount of control to the benefits of surprise and mystery. In a recent video, 
Pixel A Day argues that games need more mystery, in that they should stop trying to explain everything so they can keep some elements hidden, beyond the grasp or comprehension of the player. Not only do I agree with this, but I also think that having things kept hidden from the player is at the center of what adventures should be about. This is the opposite, if you will, of the completionist mindset. Of course, there's nothing wrong with completing games 100%, but I think a case can be made for letting go of uncovering a game's deepest secrets. Because, in the end, no secrets can equal what we can imagine them being. Consider the survival game Don't Starve, a game I've been playing for hundreds of hours since it came out back in 2013. To this day, I have yet to uncover everything there is in the caves that lie beneath the game's world. I've explored them a fair amount of times, but there are things I still have yet to see or experience within these caves. And Don't Starve feels special to me, because each time I start a new journey, I see things I've never seen before, and that leave me baffled and pleasantly surprised, no matter how familiar I am with the game already. In that regard, the game may have achieved what a great artistic piece does for people, soliciting awe and wonder endlessly, as its deepest secrets retain a veil over them. Looking at a painting, reading a great book, or just playing a good adventure game may leave us pondering for a long time after first experiencing them. And this lingering effect is so precious in our current times when everything is laid out for us the moment a game is released, giving us so much insider knowledge about a game before even buying it. Elden Ring is another good example of an artistic work that lingers in the mind and elicits wonder in the player. The game contains so many secrets, whether in its lore, its gameplay or its locations, that the more we play and explore the lands between, the more we feel there might still be even more things left to find. As if its mysteries could not be fully squeezed out. This is even more impressive when taking into account the fact that the game has been played and discussed by millions of players already, becoming a juggernaut in the video game industry. And yet, despite how gargantuan it became, it managed to retain mystery. While the latest From Software game may not be perfect, the vastness of its world and its hidden areas should be praised for lending themselves to adventures. As a side note, these features are also present in the Fallout and Elder Scrolls series as well. Despite some aspects of the latest Bethesda games leaving much to be desired, they succeed at eliciting the feeling that there are still things that remain unveiled in their worlds. Now, let's consider games that brand themselves as being all about adventure, but may end up falling short of such a definition. Assassin's Creed is a series that, despite presenting beautiful landscapes, dreamlike sceneries and jaw-dropping monuments, doesn't deliver much of an adventure. And the reason for that has to do with the level scaling presence in the last trilogy of games. When the level of the enemies scales with the player, it means that none of them will ever be much more threatening than they already are, which then turns down the sense of danger and surprise. Moreover, the zones on the map cannot be that exciting when their first characteristic is their level restriction. When that's the case, the player's imagination over what these areas contain is tied to a series of numbers rather than the potential mysteries these locations may hide. What's more is that there's barely any penalty for dying since it just puts the player back a few minutes earlier more often than not. In such a context, where is the risk? Where is the adventure? Even the exploration mode these games offer fails to deliver, because playing with no guidance anywhere on screen is almost impossible here. And this blows. It blows because out of all the quote-unquote adventure games available these days, I think the Assassin's Creed series may contain the most potential, just because its worlds are so breathtaking and inviting. That being said, and in reverse, there are also games that, on paper, should convey the feeling of adventure, but in fact may miss their mark. No Man's Sky offers a survival mode which adds a sense of danger and keeps players on their toes, 
Its exploration is also non-restrictive, which is perfect for beating up new uncharted path. And on top of all that, there's a billion planets to discover. The reality, sadly, is that after having visited the first few planets, every other one feels bland and the procedural generation betrays its lack of secrets and exciting encounters. No Man's Sky is a game that, despite its increasingly compelling qualities, doesn't deliver enough adventures. I can feel myself in danger when playing, and I can carve my own path, but if everything I see resembles everything I already saw, then the promise of future discoveries no longer holds. Speaking of which, an essay on adventures and discoveries has to mention Zelda Breath of the Wild. While the game would have benefited from a survival or permadeath mode like No Man's Sky, it remains a stellar example of a great adventure game. I won't rehash what has been said already about its extremely well-crafted world and its climbing mechanic that transformed the way we traverse the environment and discover things. What I am more interested in is the fact that many have criticized the number of Koroks in Breath of the Wild, these small wooden creatures that the player can find anywhere in the world, often revealed to them after completing a small puzzle or hidden behind inconspicuous elements in the world. The game contains 900 of them, a gigantic number that makes the search for every single one of them tedious and pointless. For a completionist, Finding these Koroks is nothing short of a nightmare, but for those who let go of catching them all, these tiny discoveries become something else. Koroks can be perceived as traces of the developer's touch, as footmarks of someone who deliberately placed them there. Hence, while the adventures of Breath of the Wild consist mostly of discovering new locations and enemies, adventures are also happening when, stumbling upon a Korok, the player faces a long-gone presence of someone who was there before. These creatures reveal that humans were there, and their intent was to leave a trace for us to see, in a twisted and opaque form of communication. Such a communication resembles one that we may have, for instance, when walking in the woods and finding an old cabin. It is an encounter that feels unsettling and leaves us wondering about who was there before and what happened to them. This is relevant to our virtual adventures because the developer's intentions take the form, in game, of ambiguous presences that re-establish curiosity by alluring to things the players may find when pushing the boundaries of the game's world. On the topic of adventures, there is one genre I have to mention, and it's adventure games. Well, I mean, the adventure games of old, also coined point and click. Looking at them, it seems rather odd to consider these games as offering adventures, since they are inherently linear, experience for their story first and foremost, and since there's usually no sense of danger in them. But they do have something important for our case, and they have it in spades, mystery. When taken in a context of their time, the late 80s and mid 90s, a time when we didn't have access to walkthroughs a few clicks away, these adventure games were tough to finish, and left many players stuck, not able to find a way out of some puzzles. Back then, many a gamer would leave these games unfinished, even though there were still things to discover. Nowadays, being stuck in a game feels like a chore, although it may in fact be a chance to reflect on a game to interact with it in a different manner and outside of the confines of a screen. After a play session, players were left thinking about what the solution to the latest puzzle could be and what surprises may lie after that puzzle. Being stuck doesn't necessarily need to be frowned upon when playing, as it indicates that the work we interact with resists our grasp and refuses to deliver everything it has without some commitment from the player. In this sense, and in the mysteries they used to hold, and even continue to hold nowadays, the genre truly lives up to its name. A question lingers inside of what has been said thus far. What about people who cannot spend hours upon hours playing games? Games like Don't Starve, The Long Dark, or Outward require time from the player, and cannot be fully experienced in small chunks. The Assassin's Creed series, on the other hand, 
can be experienced and enjoyed without the hassle that comes with permadeath and other inconveniences that reside in hardcore modes. Although this is a valid and understandable viewpoint, we ought to consider inconveniences as part and parcel of what adventures are. Again, going on an adventure requires one to accept the challenges, uncertainties and obstacles it presents. If adventures were given to us on a platter, with a steady and flat progression that doesn't involve any risk, then we wouldn't leave something daring, something new, something memorable. Whether we like it or not, to be adventurous implies to invest oneself. Investment and commitment are important aspects of an adventure, because they imply the idea that the player is dedicated to what's happening on screen that the player is willing to put their time and attention into a game. And time lies at the center of mystery. It gives mysteries a chance to linger in the mind of the player, for whom there is still and always will be something to ponder over or wonder about. In both body and mind, an adventure seizes us and doesn't let go. But in return, it asks of us to let go of everything else for it. Where does all of this leave us? In the wake of what has been said here, we may want to ask ourselves if obsessing over finishing games is a good idea. After all, a game left unfinished is also a game that promises new starts. Those who cannot invest many hours in a game then would have a chance to experience adventures without the daunting dedication they may require at times. What may matter the most for an adventure to take place, as Vladimir Jankelevich tells us, is that it is written in the uncertainty of the future, that is, in what may or may not happen, in what leaves us both fearful and excited about what has yet to come. To leave things unfinished, incomplete, unchecked in the backlog list, opens the doors to reconsider games not as products to be consumed and put down, but rather as works that we engage with and whose spells never truly vanish. Maybe then, to live an adventure is to let go of completion, of control, and of solace. There, in the dark corners of a disquieting adventure, we may encounter something that sparks our hearts and ignite our brains. A thrill.